Now, as an example of a situation where genetics is the primary determinant, so not environment, not how much vitamin D you take, not how much calcium, not how much exercise, now we're moving to the end of, other end of the spectrum where genetics is predominant. OI, or osteogenesis and perfector, is, is really a classic example. And in, in, much like other genetic diseases, there's mild forms and there's severe forms. So for example, OI type 1 is a milder form where in fact you could have an, you'd be an adult walking around and have osteoporosis and have had several fractures in your life and don't even know you have the diagnosis of OI. It can be that mild in, in terms of presentation or it can be lethal. OI type 2 is a situation where the osteoporosis is so severe that it's incompatible with life. The, the bones are so weak that they fracture over and over again and they can't sustain respiration or breathing. And then there are intermediately severe forms, OI type 3 and 4, where you can have significant short stature, you may have so many fractures that you have bone deformity. So there's a whole spectrum, much like other genetic diseases. This is an x-ray of a patient with OI type 1 and all you see really is a fracture. Even if you look at the bone, it doesn't look all that um, uh, paled or translucent. This is a patient with OI type 3, which is a more severe form caused by recurrent fractures, and you see that there's more bow bowing and more deformity. So children with OI type 3, often because of deformity of the bone, actually never are able to walk. Here you have OI type 2, which is the most severe form. Here you see the skeleton is so washed out that in this, fe in this newborn, um, with osteogenesis and perfected type 2, it's, it, it's a lethal condition. Um, the, the baby is not able to sustain respiration, and basically this is a lethal uh, type of disease. And the problem in osteogenesis and perfector is collagen. This is, at 72,000 times magnification, a picture of what collagen would look like under a very powerful microscope. And you see the banded fibers of collagen. This is what the osteoblasts, the bone-forming cells, put out and this is what calcium and phosphorus is then deposited on to mineralize into bone. And OI is caused by, as I said, genetic changes in collagen, and specifically in type 1 collagen. And the types of family structures or family trees that we see are, are maybe a mother with OI passing on to a son with OI, or a father with OI passing it on to a son with OI. It can also happen for the first time in a family where the father or the mother are both unaffected, do not have the problem, and there's a new genetic change in the, in the child. This is what we call a dominantly inherited uh, condition. In rare situations, we do see unaffected parents with a son or a daughter that may be affected with OI. And for many years, we thought this was due to a very rare situation called germline mosaicism, which means that the genetic change is just in the germ cells, the sperm and the egg. And that's why you can have children recurrently with the condition. But the, in terms of the rest of the body, the father or the mother doesn't actually have a problem because in the rest of their body, they don't have the genetic change. And this accounts for most of the types of osteogenesis and perfecta that we see in children and adults. There are mutations in the type 1 collagen gene, as I said. And from a perspective of genetics, there's a 50% of passing it on to your children every time you have a child because it's what we call a dominantly inherited genetic condition. And so a very strong genetic predisposition to osteoporosis. And in the rare situations where we see recurrence, we've thought up to recently that it's germline mosaicism. And we can diagnose this by DNA testing. And so there are more and more DNA tests that are becoming available. And what that means is we can, we can actually read that instruction in your blood. We can read the type 1 collagen genetic information and see if there's a mistake, if there's a mutation. And that's something that we can do. Or we can actually do biochemical testing and look at the collagen from the cells from your skin. Collagen is made not, made not just by bone cells, but also by skin cells. And we can see sometimes an alteration uh, in the in the biochemical testing for osteogenesis and perfecta. Now, OI is very important because as a geneticist, this is one of the major um, considerations when we see a child with non-accidental trauma or concern about child abuse. There may be fractures in the ribs, in the long bones, which sometimes are very, very suggestive of non-accidental non trauma or physical child abuse. And this is an important uh, differential because obviously, um, osteogenesis and perfector can present with fractures much like you would see in a child that's being evaluated for child abuse and this is something that we we get re lots of referral for and and you'll, you'll hear a story about that um, a little bit later one of the things that we have learned in terms of our research studies is in fact 
And not surprisingly, many different genes that affect collagen can also cause osteogenesis and perfector. And so one of the discoveries that we've made at, at, at Baylor more recently is that, again, this situation where you get recurrence of the condition in families but with unaffected parents, it's in fact not necessarily due to that rare situation of germline mosaicism, but it's due to, in fact, other genes that modify or control collagen. Collagen is very complex. It undergoes a lot of chemical changes. And as you would expect, those genes could also cause OI. And there is, in fact, a recessive form of OI where the parents are carriers, and there's a one in four chance of passing it on uh, each time there's a pregnancy. And, and that's the nature of what we call recessive inheritance. That can, in fact, cause OI. So really, there are now what we see many forms of osteogenesis imperfected, not just the dominant form that we thought was due to type 1 collagen, but there are recessive forms due to other genes um, that can chemically modify the collagen in osteogenesis imperfected. And this is not a slide to read, but it just shows you the complexity. I originally showed you that four forms of OI. Now we know there are seven forms and, and counting, and that there are many genes that may cause this. And this is where, again, DNA testing has proliferated. So our ability now to diagnose different forms of OI has increased, and hopefully this will then similarly translate to understanding susceptibility when we think about age-related osteoporosis.